What's up? Welcome to The Hook. And today, we're previewing USA versus Samoa, uh, which is this weekend. I think it's going to be on at 12.30 uh, Mountain Time, um, so that should be 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, it is live on Flow Rugby and wherever else you decide to get your American rugby. I think it, it will probably end up being streamed live for Samoans, so I think uh, that feed probably won't be geo-blocked, because, uh, well, uh, I guess they're not in geo-blocking out there. But, so, uh, the Samoan roster is not live right now. Um, I won this ball last week. Uh, this is from U.S. Rugby Foundation, Jordan Lawmore, I think that's who it is. Scott Murray, uh, whatever. You know, some Irish international, sorry. Uh, signed it, so that's kind of cool, um, but it's a USRF ball, so it's probably not worth the most, but it is leather, so that's cool. Um, since, you know, Irish rugby player, just signature, might as well just yank it off. But, uh, last week we lost 22-59 to 59 to the New Zealand Maori. Uh, the New Zealand Maori took three yellow cards, including their captain, Ash Dixon, uh, Pari Parkinson took a, what I call a soft yellow, but it's, it's soft in that it should have been red. Uh, you know, laws 9.13 and 9.18 clearly say that, you know, that was, that was cynical play, reckless play. And, uh, Sean Davies was driven into the ground. His hips did go past horizontal. Um, and, you know, it was basically a suplex or a pile drive. Uh, when it come, came to what was going to happen in the match, you know, without our full squad, without Aj, Aj McGinty and Samu Manoa and Blaine Scully, Paul Wasike, and Bryce Campbell, you know, they're ready to go. Eh, eh, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it, it was our, one of our better performances against the New Zealand Maori last time out. We only scored a try. And they scored 55, 54 points. So uh, when it came to point differential, it was closer. Uh, defensively, Gary didn't like it, of course. Uh, talk to him after the match in press conference. You can see that video. It, it'll be linked at the end, and his comments are there. But really when it comes to this, uh, were there good things? Yes, we won a lot of our exits. Uh, on lineouts, uh, we... Executed seven malls. We were successful on four of those. Uh, you know, it, we won 15 of 16 lineouts. We won all of our scrums. So when it came to set piece uh, stuff, uh, we were okay. Uh, even though we had a lot of young players uh, last week, Chance Wengleski, he did really well as a uh, sort of a, a national team debut, not a cap, but a debut with the national team. Uh, he did very well going up against Ben May. Uh, you know, scrums didn't class. We didn't go backwards, uh, and you know he did he did work around the rocks. So really happy about there. Uh, crazy to think Dylan Owsley was playing on a torn meniscus. Uh, sucks, man. Man, you play, He played really well. Played really well. Uh, extremely physical. Uh, Gannon Moore, a guy who's been in and around the team, uh, you know, a couple of years ago before going down to uh, New Zealand uh, following the pro season. Uh, he used to be a flanker, and now he's playing in the centers. Uh, it's kind of interesting there. Uh, but he's played some Miners Hand Cup uh, last year, not this not this year, uh, for North Harbor. He uh, played for North Harbor B, so he was still playing rep rugby this year. Uh, he had a good game uh, in the centers. But, uh, you know, overall it's... What does that game get? What does that weekend get us? Uh, the rugby weekend, it, it's great. Uh, it would be better for us as when we're prepping for a World Cup to have all of our players. Uh, the last time we did that and we made a really bad deal with the Premiership uh, to get those players available, it wasn't a good time against the All Blacks. So uh, we're better than, than we were then. But, uh, you know, I, I think if we're going to do this, uh, and we should, we should continue doing the Rugby Weekend it needs to be a major event on the autumn calendar, but it needs to be during the test window so we can have our players available. Um, and another thing, if you looked at the game, the draw here really wasn't uh, Ireland versus Italy. The most people in the stadium 
came in to watch the U.S. So the U.S. is still, a, still I would say, it's if you're going to have a neutral game, it's, it's the All Blacks versus somebody. Uh, the All Blacks versus somebody will sell out. If you're going to have a game against a Tier 1 opponent like this, uh, as we've seen uh, this year with the Wales-South Africa game uh, and, and Ireland-Italy, You may as well have had the U.S. play Ireland. You probably would have drawn the pro, the draw to play Ireland probably would have been greater. Uh, although we know that we didn't sell out the test we played against them in New York City, uh, that was seventeen thousand in a twenty two thousand person soccer arena, since they call Red Bull Arena. But I think we've learned that the only teams that will sell out here are the All Blacks and England. Those, those those are the brands, and those are the brands we need to work with to uh, have. If they're going to have neutral tests, those are the those are the teams. Uh, if you could get a Bledisloe test here, that would sell out because you know all blacks. I think uh, if we played South Africa in in the South or in California, uh, we could sell a lot of seats because a lot of South Africans live there. But you know they're not going to. To Washington D.C. from San Diego because they don't care that much. Uh, a lot of people did, but you know a lot of people don't either. Uh, but moving on to so so that was the rugby weekend. Uh, it was a good time. Got to see a lot of people. Went to the USRF luncheon and for the lost afternoon. Got to listen to Dunko Callahan. That was great. Uh, but moving on. Uh, to the preview versus Samoa, their roster is not out, like I said, but the U.S. roster is. And shout out to the media director, uh, Calder Cahill, and the on-site uh, team high-performance media person, um, lady, I guess, uh, Alina Tamani, for getting all this stuff done. It's, uh, you know, since they've taken over the media department, they've been, they've helped us, the media, a lot, which is awesome. So getting into it, uh, starting. At loose head prop, T. Lamostelli. He plays for Saracens in England. Actually, he, since he got injured and has now come back and is match fit, he's playing a lot of tight head prop, uh, especially with uh, Mako Vunapola out, which is crazy to think about, uh, that he's playing you know, all this tight head prop. He's earned starts at the Premiership. He's playing a ton off the bench. Uh, but he was originally a Lucy. But guess what? The positions are really different uh, up front. They are specialists. So... To have a guy move around the front row, especially now, is kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, I would rate him as our best loose head prop right now with Eric Fry currently injured. Uh, it would have been interesting if Eric Fry was available uh, because then you would have to sort of choose, but maybe not, and TD would still be playing on the left side. Uh, at hooker, Joe Tafate, Mighty Joe, plays for Wooster. Uh, he's got 16 caps to his name. He'll be ready to go, man. That, oof, that'll be nice. And then at tight head prop, Paul Mullen playing with Newcastle Falcons and has been on loan to Doncaster Knights. Playing a lot. He's got three caps. Uh, then moving on to the engine room. This is interesting. Both Greg Peterson and Nick Civetta, Civetta are, you know, they're both they're both really five locks because uh, they're both tall. Uh, Peterson's like 6'6", six, six, uh, Nick Civetta, or 6'6", six, 6'8". Six, six, Nick Civetta's locked on 6'7". So that's interesting. Both line up threats, which is good. Uh, Greg Peterson plays for Glasgow Warriors. Uh, he's got 17 caps to his name. Nick Chavetta uh, playing for Doncaster Knights. Uh, 15 caps. We're talking like these. These two guys are, are going to be really good. Uh, Greg Peterson has been playing a lot for Glasgow so far this season, so I'm happy about that. Uh, on to the back row. Uh, John Quill, uh, our six. You know, he's a six-two, six-three guy. He's heavy. Uh, out there, and he's got some speed, and he knows when to go to work. Uh, he plays for the Glendale Raptors. He's got 27 caps. Uh, Tony Lamborn, uh, currently playing for Southland uh, with 16 caps. Uh, he was our captain last week for uh, the Eagles against the Mallory, and, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's vice captain for this match. And he played really well, and, you know, in the second half, he uh, when. He got replaced. He uh, he replaced somebody else in the back row and played center. So that was kind of kind of fun. And of course, Cameron Dolan 
uh, at number eight. He's now with the NOLA gold. He's got 37 caps. If, if someone's close to, uh, on track to be a centurion, if he plays the next all his matches over the next six or seven, five or six years, he's got a shot. Uh, now, like I said, uh, Sean Davies is out with the concussion going through concussion protocol. Uh, so that, uh, you know, we've got the big man, big young man, Ruben de Haas. Uh, from the Free State Cheetahs, he's got four caps now, but he's only uh, 19 now, uh, or just turned 20, I think. Uh, and, you know, he, he played uh, 45 minutes last week. He played really well uh, working with Will Hooley, who also earns the start at Fly Half, who's been playing very well for the Bedford Blues, also with four caps. Uh, going on to the wings, uh, at left wing, we've got Ryan Matias, uh, plays for the San Diego Legion. Uh, he's also been playing a lot of center, so he can be a very physical player. And he's very dynamic. If you saw his trial last week, you, you know that he's got the speed and he's got the ability to evade. Uh, going into our centers, our bruisers, this is what I want to see. This is the lineup, you know. This is Paul, the man, Lasique. He's like an Abrams tank rolling. You just give him the bolt, but guess what? He can also distribute. He can pass. This is a guy. He can play. Uh, Bryce Campbell at outside center. He's currently playing with London Irish coming into camp. And then we've got Gannon Moore uh, earning the start and his debut as a, you know, a cap player at left wing, or right wing rather. So that's really awesome. Uh, Blaine Scully coming in to captain the side. Plays for Cardiff Blues. He's 40 caps uh, at fullback. So this is, like, when it comes to the first 15, this is about as good as was possible. And I'll get into the bench a little bit in my opinions. Pump the tree, rather. Uh, Dylan Fawcett, reserve hooker uh, from Rugby United New York. Uh, the Butcher over Hildebrand, I can take it, you know. Uh, they're both really good, so it's really uh, about who impresses in camp because they're like neck and neck uh, as the uh, hooker playing behind Joe Tufate. And then we've got another debutante, David Ayunu. Uh, he plays for Stade Toulousian, uh, and, you know, he has a bunch of top 14 caps to his name now, playing off the bench, and played off the bench in the Champions Cup uh, for a whole half. This very promising young player will be great to see how he plays. Uh, and then at reserve tight end prop, Dina Waldrum for the London Scottish hasn't played a lot, but has is match fit. He played against the Maori, uh last week, and he did pretty well off the bench. So, moving on to our reserve lock, we've got David Tamalau, uh playing for the Glasgow Warriors. Played last week for the Warriors and started on Friday. Uh, so that's really good to see. He's ready to go. Uh, Hanko Hamishais, currently unattached. Uh, you know, when it comes to a seven, this is the guy. Uh, this is the guy who can play. Uh, Devereaux Ferris, is on the bench. I, I personally, they also called in Nick Moyer. I wanted to see him, but uh, Devereaux was called first. And, you know, he's been in camp all week in the way this works. And I think uh, Nick Boyer just got in, got into Spain with camp, so he's really only been in camp today. Uh, and so two days of practice with the boys, uh, not going to be ready uh, to play. So we'll see. I guess we'll get to see Devereaux at test level. Uh, I you know, when it comes to players, I, I look at, at scrum half, he's uh, behind Holden Younger, who is not on the squad. So, yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, Will McGee, uh, reserve fly half. Uh, you know, played fullback last week, played pretty well. <laughs> when you're uh, thinking you're going to play, be playing reserve uh, fly half last week and then had to start at fullback all of a sudden with some injuries after captain's run. Tim, Timmy Mops from Nola Gold. Uh, with seven caps, finally back into the squad. Uh, big athletic uh, winger. It's, uh, you know, been plying his trade uh, out of Trinity College in, uh, in Ireland the uh, last couple of years while going to school for his master's, but he came back for the MLR season last year. Uh, and, you know, it's, he, he, he did well there and got called into the APC uh, in October. And... Uh, he did. He scored one of our three tries last week. He's ready to go. So this, like I said, this is about as good a roster as you can have. Uh, Nick Boyer, yes, he was called up, but he's really unavailable. 
uh, for this test. So I think he'll bet in and be ready to go next week. But based on everything, uh, with Samu Manoa being unavailable, uh, that's you know that's your that's as good as you're gonna get. Uh, so uh, when it comes to lines, uh, I'll uh, let's look at this. Uh, my man over at Rugby Forecast sent in a bunch of stuff uh, to talk about. So let's bring those up. Uh, our last test. So. Going back to March of 2018, or no, February of this year, uh, we are 8-1 uh, on against, so we are 1-1 one one against rep sides, but uh, we've, we've played really well. Uh, we beat Scotland 30-29 to at home, uh, beat Russia 62-13, to and we beat Canada 42-17 to in our last outing. Uh, yeah. It's our trend is going up. We have as close to our best side as possible right now with Sean Davies out. Uh, let's take a look at Samoa. Uh, their uh, their 2018 uh, tests, uh, they played uh, Tonga and Fiji during the Pacific Nations Cup uh, with Fiji winning and Tonga winning. Uh, they did win both matches uh, in the Rugby World Cup qualifiers against Germany, 66-15 and 42-28. Uh, so when you think about that, uh, they played really well at home against uh, Germany, but now they're having to play on tour in Europe, and their coach was like, you know, we deserve to play Tier 1 opponents. Well, the USA is ranked above you, so you might as well beat us before you talk. They also played Georgia this tour, so they have a chance to shut a bunch of other Tier 2 nations up who are ahead of them. Uh, but when you look at the trend, uh, you know, they, they didn't do what they needed to do during the Pacific Nations Cup. Moving on, uh, looking at the, you know, projections and our history, uh, we have played five times, and we've never beaten Samoa. We've played them most recently, uh, in 2015, uh, in September, um, during the Rugby World Cup, and we lost 16 to 25. Uh, we also lost to them during the Pacific Nations Cup during uh, warm-ups uh, in the same year, in July, 21 to 16. And we're better than we were then. So, you gotta look at this, our, our trends going up. But we've always been close overall with Samoa going back to 1999. It hasn't been that big of a gap. But looking at our projections and what the, uh, the algorithm says uh, from Rugby Forecast, that's what we got. Chance of winning uh, is the United States, 58.2%. The chance of winning for Samoa is 39.3% uh, with U.S. projected to win by two. Uh, if I was a betting man, based on current injuries and everything, I would say Samoa minus five is your line. But the uh, the computer thinks that we got a chance. So, go Eagles. <laughs>